morning and welcome to worship with St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Long Beach, California. It's the last Sunday after the Feast of the Epiphany. And just as the season opened up with bright lights and voices from heaven, so we close out the season with the reading of the Transfiguration story and bright lights and voices from heaven, all of which we invite you to carry with you as we turn to the season of Lent. Ash Wednesday is this coming Wednesday. We'll worship in English at noon on Zoom and Facebook Live and at 7 p.m. on Zoom and in Facebook Live in Spanish with Ash Wednesday Teze, oh, whoops, sorry, Ash Wednesday Compline at 8.30 p.m. So join us on Ash Wednesday. If you have not received ashes in the mail from us and would like ashes, please be in touch with the parish office and we'll see what we can do to get ashes to you before Wednesday. But for now, prepare yourself for God coming among us in glory. Worship will begin soon. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God, 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 God ever, ever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
God be with you. And also with, you. also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Second Kings. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes. I know, keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who, who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know, be silent. And Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended into, uh, in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. 
A reading from the saints, their good marshal. Born in 1908, Baltimore, Maryland, to a Pullman car porter and a school teacher, Marshall was the grandson of a freed slave. He grew up at St. James, Baltimore, where Michael Curry later served as rector. He attended Baltimore Public Schools and then the historically Black Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. In 1930, he applied to the University of Maryland uh, Law School, but was denied admission due to his race. The indignity of this event would influence his future professional life. After graduating first in his class and receiving his law degree from Howard University, Marshall successfully sued the University of Maryland Law School, resulting in the admittance of minority students. In 1954, as chief counsel for the NAACP, he argued and won the landmark Brown versus Board of Education case before the Supreme Court. The decision refuted the idea of separate but equal public schools and was one of the many challenges to state-sponsored discrimination that Marshall argued and won. He devoted 30 years traveling the South fighting for the rights of America's oppressed minority on behalf of the NAACP's Legal Defense and Educational Fund. Before his appointment by John F. Kennedy, to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit in 1961. In this capacity, he wrote over 150 decisions, including support for the rights of immigrants, limiting government intrusion in cases involving illegal research and seizure, double jeopardy, and right to privacy issues. Before his subsequent appointment as Supreme Court Justice in 1967, he won 14 of the 19 cases he argued before the nation's highest court. He was the first African-American to hold either position and served for 24 years on the court, retiring in 1991. Upon Marshall's arrival to New York City in 1938, he became a very active member of St. Philip's Church in Harlem, serving on the vestry and as senior warden and deputy to the 1964 General Convention. In 1965, the Marshall family moved to Washington, D.C. and joined St. Augustine's Church. I wish I could say that racism and prejudice were only distant memories. We must dissent from the indifference. We must dissent from the apathy. We must dissent from the fear, the hatred, and the mistrust. We must dissent from a nation that has buried its head in the sand, waiting in vain for the needs of its poor, 
is elderly and is sick to disappear and just blow away. We must dissent from a government that has left its young without jobs, education, or hope. We must dissent from the poverty of vision and the absence of moral leadership. We must dissent because America can do better, because America has no choice but to do better. Good morning. I'm Reba Birmingham, St. Luke's Chancellor, and have served as Verger and Lem, and I'm a Christian. I'm also a lesbian who identifies as she and her, an eight o'clocker in the regular times, and a lawyer just trying to get into heaven someday. When Reverend Jane asked me to come and talk about discipleship, especially as it has to do with the law, some disclosure is required to keep it real. As a member of the LGBTQ community and a graduate of conservative Lutheran and Catholic schools, I had been condemned by many who called themselves Christian and learned to hide under many layers, changing pronouns at work and medicating the pain. Deeply wounded by these so-called Christians, it was ironic when in 1993, I became church secretary of St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Laguna Beach. It was my job all through law school and there are no accidents. This was a turning point. I was sober by then, but came there so angry at God and organized religion. And here was my job. My job was to type in the Old Testament, New Testament, and gospel verses every week into that bulletin. Father Ray Fleming would come in the church office and I would be silently fuming. He would poke until we had real conversations. That's what I mean by Christian authenticity. Watch what people actually do over a period of time, not just what they say. He showed me what real Christians are like and broke down my arguments about how the Bible was used as a weapon and contradicted itself so it couldn't be true. In an extra extravagant show of love, God sent me, an angry queer person, a super educated Episcopal priest to deconstruct the damage done. It was probably the only thing that could have reached me. Now I crave that Christian authenticity and although it's hard to describe, we all know it when we see it. I became an Episcopalian and started attending St. Luke's in 1997. As a brand new Episcopalian and a brand new admittee to the California bar, I soon found that following Jesus is not the goal of many lawyers. Of course, I'm not a, a normal lawyer, nor do I wish to be. Uh, there is so much going on besides the written word in a case or a statute and even winning and losing. I've had plenty of trials and even made law, but you never know where you're going to be led once you commit to following Jesus. One morning at the eight o'clock service, I turned and met Mary Artino, a social worker right here at St. Luke's, sitting in the pew behind me. She invited me into several hospice situations to do final estate planning, and my practice opened up in that field. Now we do the journey most avoided at our church every other year. It's a series of workshops about death and dying. As a limb, I had the privilege of giving what turned out to be uh, a parishioner's very last communion. This was a turning point also. Hospice, assisted living and other places the sick and elderly see few are no longer off limits. The picture you see on the screen is Jean. She sought estate planning after being ripped off by a caregiver, pretending to be a friend. Jean faced many hurdles just to get through for help. Her strangled voice sounded like a crank call when she called our law office. She can't drive, and like many in her situation, her ID was out of date. For me, this is work to be done. But for her, in addition to that, it was a visit. There are so many like Jean who need to be seen and remember they matter. When this pandemic is done, I hope we can do something more about these folks. To close, my life as an attorney has been informed over the last 22 years by the sermons of Father Dennis Brunel, Reverend Mary Goshert, Mother Beryl Nyer, Reverend Gary Cummins, Reverend Dean Farrar, and now Reverend Jane Gould and Reverend Nancy Fausto and De Deacon Steve Alder, as well as fellowship with all of you. So of course, I'm not a normal attorney. 
what was spoken into my life affected me. I try in each situation to look through the hurt and the noise to that place where God is calling us. I've been called the kumbaya lawyer by sour opposing counsel, who ironically was lesbian too, but I kind of like that, kumbaya. So if you get anything out of this about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, the only thing that matters to me is to find and do God's will in the midst of chaos. Before each day, I pray that God goes before me into the office and gives me the wisdom and the strength to find and do the right thing. Thank you for letting me share my story of discipleship. Though I may speak with bravest fire and have the gift to all inspire and have not The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you. Lord. Glory to you. Oh. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them high up a mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. 
listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord. Lord. Praise. Oh. In the name of God, creator, liberator, and sustainer. Amen. We are about a month away from the one year anniversary of the day that our world stood still and we were forced into a lockdown. I know, sounds dramatic, but it's true. Almost one year of our church doors being closed on Sunday mornings. Almost one year separated from Holy Communion, almost a year from when normal was shattered and our reality was wrapped up in Zoom meetings, mass and social distancing. It seems unbelievable, right? And now don't get me wrong, while this separation has been difficult, we have had over the months grown in unexplainable ways. Zoom slash Facebook live church is different and was quite uncomfortable in the beginning and sometimes it still is. But, but we have found, we have found that the Holy Spirit can indeed transcend through screens. We have found that the power of music can transport us from our living rooms to cathedrals. We have found the beauty that, that lies in diverse images of God and of scripture. And while we cannot sing with, with one another, we have been blessed by the different voices of our congregation that help lead us through liturgy every Sunday morning. We have been blessed by the stories of our fellow church members that we have heard throughout this year. Church this year has been difficult. Life has been difficult. There's no denying that. And yet, if you look closely, you will find small little blessings, small little moments where we can see that we have not been abandoned in this pandemic. If we open our hearts and our minds, we find God moments. We find those places in which we have experienced, experienced holiness. And I, I give it to you. Maybe you have not experienced the whole chariots of fire like Elisha, or, you know, probably, you probably have not had the whole transfiguration experience where you're blinded by the light of God, and then you discover Jesus, Moses, and Elijah standing in front of you. But I guarantee you, we have had holy moments this year. We have experienced the beauty, strength, resilience, and commitment of community. And in that, we found God. Something struck me in today's gospel. Jesus finds himself standing with Moses and Elijah, who themselves had had mountaintop moments. And if we look into their stories, we find that their mountaintop experiences came in moments of despair. Just as they're ready to throw in the towel, God reveals God's self to them. Let's look at Exodus 33. Moses was sick and tired of God's people for they had been liberated from oppression and all they could do was complain about their liberation, not meeting their expectations. 
God's people, God's chosen, when in the wilderness began to worship, worship a golden calf, turning their backs on God. Well, no wonder Moses was having an existential crisis. Elijah on 1 Kings chapter 9, he is being hunted down by Ahab and Jezebel for killing the 850 prophets of Baal. And he goes to the mountain to die. He is ready to give it all up. But there he meets God and God gives him his marching orders. Go and prepare the next prophet. Then he goes and he prepares Elisha who follows him and witnesses his mentor being taken up to heaven on a chariot of fire. Elijah then takes the torch and lives out his calling. You see, God, God comes to Moses and Elijah in moments of despair. And God says, I know you want to go back to how things were. I know you want to be comfortable and safe, but I'm calling you to lead, to teach, to dissent, to disrupt, and to bring about change. In the story of the transfiguration, we hear that voice that says, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. God is directing the disciples in their fear to listen to God's son, who will soon descend from the mountaintop where his divine nature has been revealed, only to head into Jerusalem where he will die on a cross on a distant mountaintop where his humanity will be extinguished. But in doing so, death is defeated. Now, Peter may not have known that this was about to happen, but he recognizes that where they are is a good place. He wants to stay there, just like us. We want to stay where it is safe, where it's good. We want to stay in the warmth of God's light and push away the things that make us uncomfortable. Just like Peter could not stay on the Mount of Transfiguration, or Moses stay in Mount Sinai, or Elijah in Mount Horeb, we cannot stay where we have been. We too must go. You see, we are in a transition moment. By no means am I saying that this pandemic has been a mountaintop experience, all right? Let's get that clear. If anything, it has thrown us into the deep valleys of despair. But this pandemic did rip us away from what we were accustomed to. And it has shown us how fragile life is but also how God is present in our lives, our homes, and our vocations. Reba this morning blessed us with her discipleship story. And if you did not cry a little, I don't know about you because I know I had tears. But in her discipleship story, she talks about how as a lawyer, she has found a way to live out her faith and find God in the people that she serves. As the kumbaya lawyer, she looks past the pain and the chaos to find God. Think about that last part. Looking past the pain and the chaos to find God. God will meet us in the mountaintops, deep valleys, and everywhere in between, but we must pay attention. Now, once we are all vaccinated and return to some sort of normalcy, we cannot go back to how it was. We cannot, we should not head back to Egypt or Galilee. We cannot go back to just sitting in the pews on Sunday morning. We are being called in this moment to transition from what was to who we will be. This moment is calling us to recommit 
to whose we will be. As beloved children of God, we are being called to trust in God, trust in the process. Now, during our annual meeting, as part of the sermon, we had a leadership conversation between the two wardens and the clergy. And Ryan said, San Lucas es como una mariposa. No solamente cambiando de afuera, pero de adentro. St. Luke's is like a butterfly, not only changing on the outside, but on the inside. The Greek word for transfiguration is metamorpho, to change, to transform the essential nature of something. So let's think of metamorphosis, the process of transformation from an immature form to an adult form in two or more distinct stages. Jesus's transformation was witnessed by his disciples. St. Luke's transformation is being witnessed by all of us because we're all part of that transformation. We are becoming something new. We are a pretty butterfly. Now, we might be tempted to stay where it's comfortable. But I encourage all of you to trust in God. Trust in the process the church is entering, but also trust in where God is leading you in your home life and in your vocation. Are you looking past the pain and the chaos? Are you actively searching for God? As we enter Lent 2021, we are inviting you to take notice of where you are encountering God, not just here during church, but in the high and low moments of your life, in the moments of distance learning for your kids, in the moments when your students are angry and disconnected, the moments where you have been sitting on your computer for hours, the moments where you long to have human touch. Scripture promises that God always shows up. We just need to pay attention and be unafraid to break open from our cocoons and emerge as new creatures. So let us break open St. Luke's. Let us leave behind who we were and proudly fly into new horizons. Let us be the people and church that God needs not the church that was a year ago, though we were a fabulous church. Let us now be, be a church that is unafraid to witness and be transformation. A church unafraid to go, to lead, to teach, to dissent, to disrupt, to make change. Let us go and find God in all the places of our life. Amen.
Together, let us affirm our faith. We believe in God who is never confined to our imagining, is never in bondage to our understanding, and never kept within our dwelling places. Our God is the mystery of divine and human bound together, of power and vulnerability, of crucifixion and resurrection. Our God is the wonder of truth and compassion, of liberation and responsibility, of eternal wisdom and amazing grace. We celebrate this God who leaps free of all our boundaries in love, stretching out beyond any barricades and in mercy bending deep into fragile human hearts. Amen. See what love had the Father bestowed on us. See what love had the Father bestowed on us. Bestowed on us. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, John and Diane, our bishops, for all the lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work and reconciliation in the world. We pray especially for our clergy, Jane, Nancy, Dean, Beryl, and Steve, and for our vestry and staff. God of love, hear our prayers for the church. God of freedom, we pray for our nation, 
and all the nations of the world for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed for elected and appointed leaders that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively, to actively resist evil, unite the human family in bonds of love. We pray for President Biden, for the members of Congress, the governor, the mayor, and all who serve government in these difficult days. God of freedom. Here are our prayers. Here are our prayers for the world. For the world. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation trusted to our care, for the animals and birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us the thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of justice. Hear our prayers. Our prayers for the earth. God of peace. We pray for the communities of our diocese, for our local leaders, for our schools and workplaces, for our neighborhoods and homes. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people. God of peace. Here are our prayers, 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 prayers for our prayers communities. For our commu God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, for the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for those held down by prejudice or injustice. Awaken us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. For Beryl, Nathan, Mike, Jean, Karen, Ernie, Joan, Vilma, Ron, Sue, Harry, Gracie, Andrew, Patrick, Cassidy, Rita, William, Benjamin, Anne, Christy, Jim, Patricia, Ruth, Lucille, Kim, Tony, Olga, Rudy, Jordan, Paul, Loretta, Chris, Claudia, Ronnie, Eli, Laura, Fred, Louise, Betty, Angel, Dave, for all essential workers, all who have lost income due to COVID-19, all infected by the novel coronavirus, all suffering from depression, anxiety, and all isolation due to COVID-19, for all our homeless brothers and sisters, for all refugees and immigrants, for an end to violence of all kind. God of mercy. Here are prayers for all who are in need. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, especially Emily Trespas, Eleanor Johnson, Teresa Fajardo, Frank Metz, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who have called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who have died because of hatred, for all the, com the communion of saints, make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us to the last into the glorious company of the saints in life. God of grace. Hear our prayers, Hear our prayers for those who have died. Grant, O oh God that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. 
that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Forgive me for the things I have done and not done. Forgive me for the things I have said and not said. Forgive me for the life I have lived and not lived, that I might reflect the image of the one I profess to follow in thought, word, and deed, and in discovering my true self. Draw others unto that light. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to God. I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a blaze of light in every word, it doesn't doesn't matter what you heard, the holy or the broken, hallelujah, hallelujah. Told the truth, I didn't come to fool you. And even though it all went wrong, I stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah. 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 In our pain, our blue, our beautiful, our hard, our messy, our ugly, our struggles, and our joys, God is with us. God accompanying us, God alongside us. God amid us, God among us, God 
beside us, God by us, God including us, God near us, God plus us, God upon us, God as companion to us, God side by side us, God in the thick of us, in the thick of our humanity, in the middle of this weary world, God is with us, in the gift and in the muck and mire of real life, we are called to be present, to be in the flesh with one another, accompanying others, alongside others, amid others, beside others, by others, for others, including others, near others, a companion to others, side by side with others, in the thick of others, God with us, us with others, God with the world in the thick of the beautiful and the messy. Gracious God, in epiphanies large and small, you make your love and light visible to us. During these days of disease, distancing, discord, and death, so much gets in the way of us seeing your light and feeling your love. We long to come together in community to receive the bread and wine of Holy Communion, knowing that you are present there. Help us to remember that even when we are separated from each other, the sacraments and our sacred space, you are present in us, among us, beside us, near us, upon us, by us, including us, accompanying us always and forever in love and light God with us. And so let us now pray together our prayer for spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, you instituted for us a great sacrament in the promise of life and love. Feed us in our hearts with faith and trust. Draw us closer to you and to each other and strengthen us for service to our neighbor. Come before you now with hearts you have fed all our lives, and with the promise that you've given yourself for us. Keep us strong in that faith until we can meet again at your table. Amen.
Beloved people of St. Luke's, let us join together in the prayer our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, give us a be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, thy will be done in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. This day our day give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we have not in temptation, deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, glory are yours, the glory forever and ever. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen. And so as we gather today, what special celebrations, anniversaries, or prayers on your hearts should we be offering up today? Hey, Jane, it's Ann. Yep. John's birthday was Friday. He was 17. All right. Oh, that's relatively terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but a beautiful and excellent thing. <laughs> so Sean 17th. Excellent. Other things, other people, other events. All right. Well, if something occurs to you, just wave your hand, put it in chat, put it in comment on Facebook Live, and we will add it in the midst. Holy and life-giving God, as we gather at the end of this season of bright lights and big shows of your presence, open our lives, our hearts, our minds, our relationships to you being present in and among us. We give thanks this day for Sean as he celebrates his 17th birthday. Lord, it is such a blessing and so awe-inspiring to watch young people grow up in our midst to become adults. And so... As Sean grows into being the young man you made him to be, Lord, we ask your blessing upon him. You, we ask that as he listens for your voice in the midst of his life, he might trust in the voice of you speaking to him. 
in a still small voice of calm, in the midst of the wind and whirlwind, in the midst of fire and flood, heaven only knows, Lord, you show up in all kinds of ways. Be present to and for Sean, that he might know that he never walks alone. And with Anne and Nora, as they are parents of a teenager, Lord, that is a blessed and most wonderful time. Give them the patience, the peace, the wisdom, the insight, and the grace to love day by day, to rejoice in Sean's presence in their life and in the life of this community. And Lord, we give thanks for Reba, for her prophetic witness among us, for living each day looking for you. May we each hear her invitation and challenge to find you in the midst of the pain and the chaos, in the midst of the joy and blessing. Open us to see all the ways, the times you are showing up that we both individually and as a community might become the butterflies you need us to be. As we head into Lent, that time of cocooning and breaking open, open us to where you are, walking with us in the midst of these wilderness ways. Amen. And so, my friends, let us remember, we were made to enjoy music, to enjoy beautiful sunsets, to enjoy looking at the billows of the sea and to be thrilled with a rose that is bedecked with dew. Human beings are actually created for the transcendent, for the sublime, for the beautiful, for the truthful. And all of us are given the task of trying to make this world a little more hospitable to these beautiful things. And may the blessing of God who created us came to live among us as Jesus and renews us through the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. And so for announcements, happy Valentine's Day. Find someone with whom to share love. Do it face-to-face. Do it on Zoom. Do it by text. Do it by message. Do it with a gift. Do it with a song. However it works, let this be a day of life and of love and of celebrating God's great love for us and all creation and somehow, some way making that love known. And then, as is so often the case, get ready for Lent. Eat all your Valentine's Day chocolate before Wednesday. No, you don't really have to do that. This Lent, my word is give up absolutely nothing. We've already given up plenty. Nothing. Keep it all. Anything that draws you closer to God. And if it's chocolate or a glass of wine, may it be so. Let it draw you to God. But um, we will gather on Ash Wednesday at noon in English on Zoom and Facebook Live and at 7 p.m. in Spanish on Zoom and Facebook Live and at 8.30 for Ash Wednesday Compline uh, on Zoom. And just know that this Lenten journey, it is a time to go deeper with God through worship, 
through prayer, through community, through acts of service, however it works for you, find something, some way in these 40 days of Lent that will take you from where you are into a deeper relationship with God. Only you know how God might be wanting to show up in and for you. Only you can choose how you engage this journey. I just encourage you, find some way in these 40 days to meet God all over again. Now, are there other announcements, things I'm forgetting, other than the fact that uh, Lent is coming and Ash Wednesday is Wednesday? Can I say it often enough? (laughs) All righty. So, Steve, dismiss us into this great and glorious day of consuming everything that needs to be consumed in our house before the end of Epiphany season. Amen, Jane. And now, <laughs> and now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, everyone. Hallelujah. Good morning, St. Luke's, and happy Valentine's Day on this beautiful, beautiful morning. Um, To our Facebook community, thank you so much for joining and worshiping with us today. Your presence is always a joy and a a blessing to us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all next Sunday at 10 a.m. And don't forget those Ash Wednesday services as well. For all those of you on Zoom, we invite you to come join us on the coffee hour starting right now.